Oiwa, who continued to unconsciously consume the poison, lost her hair, her face became swollen, and she transformed into a hideous form. The next day, when Banzo visited the house, he finds Shinzaburo dead, strangled by a skeleton. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Halloween of 2022 is finally coming. For you to fully enjoy this season, would you like to enjoy some spine chilling Japanese horror? The Japanese horror stories called Kaidan developed significantly during the peaceful Edo period when there were professionals who told and carried on the stories. For the commoners, listening to such people telling the scary stories was like going to watch a horror movie today. So today, I will tell you the stories of the three most tragic ghosts in Japanese history. I especially love the last story that's not only scary, but also mixes the romance of the characters. So I hope you can enjoy the video till the end. However, the details of the story does differ depending on the region. So please don't think that the ones I'm going to be introducing to you are the absolute ones. If you get interested, it would be great if you can do more research yourself. And if there are any other Japanese horror stories that you like the most, please let me know in the comments. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on travel to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. それでは本日は階段を語ってまいりましょう。One, Yotsuya Kaidan, Oiwa. Then let's start talking about the first story. At Yotsuya, a district in present-day Tokyo, there was a beautiful woman called Oiwa. She married a man called Yemon just as her parents have arranged for her. Back in those days, the values of family names were very important, so free love was not an option for anyone. However, luckily, Oiwa and Yemon gradually began to be attracted to each other, and before they knew it, they were truly in love. This should have been the beginning of a happy life for the two, but there is evil that comes to tear this happiness apart. It was a different woman living in the neighborhood called Ome, who falls in love with Iemon. In order to fulfill his cute granddaughter's wish, Ome's grandfather tries to win Iemon over by baiting him with money and status. At first, Iemon refused, but his heart gradually began to waver due to the large amount of money and his position as a high-ranking official that was offered by Ome's grandfather. I didn't even want to marry Oiwa in the first place. Why would I have to care? And finally, Iemon accepts Ome as his new wife. Now the problem is what to do with his formal wife, Oiwa. Although Oiwa did nothing wrong, horrifyingly, Iemon started to poison her food little by little every day, just as Ome's grandfather had directed. Oiwa, who continued to unconsciously consume the poison, lost her hair, her face became swollen, and she transformed into a hideous form. Seeing her monstrous face in the mirror one day, Oiwa became frantic from shock and died. Iemon was very pleased and thought that the money and position was finally his. However, Oiwa turned into a horrifying ghost and appeared every night near Iemon's bed to grudge him for his betrayal. <laughs> Eventually, Iemon became weak and died, as if the ghostly Oiwa dragged him away to another world. There are different theories as to how the story ends, and some suggest an even more terrific conclusion that Iemon goes completely insane and kills his new wife and himself. So to make a long story short, this is about a woman who turns into a ghost to get her revenge against her ex-husband, who turned her into a hideous monster. However, what's truly scary wasn't Oiwa, was it? Yes, it was the humans that did such a brutal thing to an innocent woman. This story may have been something that has taught Japanese people what is truly the most frightening thing in this world. 2. Sarayashiki Okiku. Now let's move on to the next story. There was a woman named 
大きく。A servant working in a mansion of a powerful man. One day, she accidentally broke one of the ten plates that her master treasured. The furious master cut off Okiku's middle finger and locked her up into a room as punishment. However, Okiku was punished so severely and felt so guilty that she escaped from the confinement room and threw herself into an old well in the back of the house, where she died. Thereafter, they began to hear voices from the well, counting the plates one by one. The voice will count to nine and then weep that one is missing. Not only will they hear this eerie voice every night, but they soon began to be cursed, such as the master's new child being born without a middle finger. Rumors spread about this, and Okiku's master was punished by the government for treating his servant terribly. And a sutra reading was held. To free Okiku's soul. One night, when she was counting up to nine as usual, a Buddhist monk shouted ten right afterward. Hearing this, Okiku was finally released from her feelings of guilt and disappeared. Just like the first story, compared to poor Okiku who threw herself into a well out of shame and remorse, I think the master who took her finger and imprisoned her for a single plate is much more horrifying. Three, Botan Doro, Otsu. Then finally, let's move on to the final story. A daughter of a rich family called Otsu falls in love with a ronin called Shinzaburo, who she happens to meet. However, their social statuses are so different that they could never be allowed to be together. From the pain of knowing that she will never be able to live her life together with her true love, Otsu finally lost her life. Shinzaburo was grieving every day, losing his precious love. But one night, Otsuyu came to his house carrying a botan doro, a peony lantern. At first, he was surprised that Otsuyu, who was supposed to be dead, appeared. But he was so happy that he allowed her into his house. Shinzaburo's companion, Banzo, happened to witness the situation. But what he saw was a skeleton holding a lantern, being welcomed. Into Shinzaburo's house, Banzo rushed to find a monk that could save Shinzaburo, and they put up a talisman, a charm, on the house to prevent Otsuyu from taking Shinzaburo to a different world. At first, Shinzaburo took Banzo's advice and agreed to put up the talisman. However, listening to the voice of Otsuyu crying outside every night, asking him to take the talisman charm off, he felt sorry for her and finally ripped it off and welcomed her. The next day, when Banzo visited the house, he finds Shinzaburo dead, strangled by a skeleton. This story is scary: how a ghost appears and a person actually dies. But it's very different from the first two stories. Every character acted out of concern for someone else, and no one was trying to hurt anyone. Considering that Shinzaburo was happy to die and be with Otsuyu, it seems to me that this is somewhat a happy ending. You can tell that these ghost stories that have been carried on for a long time in Japan not only is scary but also teaches us important lessons in life. Which story did you enjoy the most? Please let me know. Then, lastly, today's conclusion. I introduce the three tragic ghost stories of Japan. One, Yotsuya Kaidan, Oiwa. Although Oiwa and her husband Iemon were living happily together, there was a different woman that fell in love with Iemon. The grandfather of that woman eventually won Iemon over by baiting him with money and status. Oiwa was poisoned and killed by her husband, who wanted to get rid of her. Oiwa turned into a horrifying ghost and appeared every night near Emon's bed to grudge him for his betrayal, which eventually led him to die too. Two, Sarayashiki Okiku. A servant named Okiku was punished by getting her middle finger cut off and locked up in a room after accidentally breaking one of the ten important dishes her master owned. She felt so guilty that she. Threw herself into an old well in the back of the house and died. Thereafter, Okiku's voice could be heard from the well every night, counting the plates and grieving there was one missing. She was finally released from her feelings of guilt and disappeared after a monk read sutras for her. Three, Botan Doro 
Otsuyu. A daughter of a rich family named Otsuyu falls in love with a ronin called Shinzaburo, but they could not be together because their social statuses are too different. Eventually, Otsuyu died from pain and sorrow, but she suddenly appeared in front of Shinzaburo's house one day. Shinzaburo's companion, Banzo, found out that Shinzaburo was about to be taken to the another world by Otsuyu and tries to help. But in the end, Shinzaburo chooses death to be together with Otsuyu. That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you thought this could be a good theme for me to dress up for Halloween this year, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. And I'll see you in my next video. So as I said in the beginning, there's really, really a lot of different theories to all three of these stories, actually. And I kind of chose the ones that I personally wanted to introduce to you. Um, let's, for example, let's say the Sarayashiki, the second one that I introduced about the plates, you know. Um, there are some stories that say that it was actually the master who pushed her into the well to get rid of her. So that's much worse than, you know, cutting off her finger and, you know, confining her. And it's, it's much worse. So some stories say that as well. And also for the third story about Shinzaburo being um, taken away to a different world by his love, you know, Otsuyu, uh, the, the peony ladder one, yeah, Botandoro. Some say that Shinzaburo was actually very frightened and didn't want to be taken away to a different world by Otsuyu. So there's actually different stories to it and such. But, well, most people do say that it was Shinzaburo that took off the charm, the talisman off his house. So mm, I, I personally like the story how um, Shinzaburo was actually willing to be with Otsuyu even if he would um, be taking his life away, you know. And the first story, by the way, at the end I wanted to quickly introduce to you, the first story actually, some people say that it's related to the 47 Ronin, the Akko Samurai. Now, I don't know too much because there's a lot of different theories to this as well, but they say that this story, the, the first story actually, is connected. The Yotsuya Kaidan is actually connected to the story of the 47 Ronin. So um, I believe it was actually one of the servants of the leader of the 47 Ronin, which was Oishi. So one of the servants was actually the person, the person who was the father of the daughter. So basically that's Okiku, right, in the beginning. So, so it's really complicated, but it was the daughter was Okiku of then the father was a servant of Oishi, who was the leader of the 47 Ronin, yeah. And the, the husband that betrays this daughter was actually related to Kira, which is the enemy of the 47 Ronin, right? So some people suggest, um, I think it was in Kabuki or Ningyo Joruri, it was a doll place. I think it was played together, how the Yotsuya Kaida and the 47 Ronin, the, the Chushingura, which is the story of the 47 Ronin, was actually played together as the front and back side of the story. So I didn't know about this actually, actually when I was making the script and I found this at the last moment before I was filming this. So if you're interested, I hope you can look for more information. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to find it. And if you learn more, it'd be great if you let me know in the comments. And again, thank you so much for watching this video and I really hope you enjoy Halloween. Happy Halloween guys!